In this Component 2 screencast, we're going to examine the main types of research designs that are used in sociological research. Now, so far, we focused mainly on individual research methods. So we focused on the individual tools that sociologists use to generate and gather data. Uh, for example, different types of observational techniques and different ways of asking questions. Now, each of these individual methods uh, could be thought of as individual ingredients in the research process. And like any ingredients, they only make sense in the context of an overall recipe. And in the context of research, this recipe is known as a research design. In other words, the overarching structure of the research. So we can think of a research design as the research strategy and the individual methods of sampling, uh, data generation and analysis are the means to meet the aims of this strategy. And we're going to look at some of the main uh, research designs or strategies used in sociological research. We're going to look at ethnography, uh, we're going to look at social surveys, case studies, longitudinal research and also triangulation or methodological pluralism. So let's start by considering what sociologists mean by an ethnographic research design. An ethnography uh, is an approach to research that has its origins in sociology sister subjects called social anthropology. And social anthropologists are interested in pre-industrial societies and they use ethnography to study the way of life of these pre-industrial societies. So ethnography involves the researcher trying to produce a very detailed description of the way of life of a particular group. And the aim of ethnography is to try to understand the symbolic world of the people studied. In other words, to uh, achieve the Stehen and to understand the meanings that people uh, attach to their behaviour and their culture. And in order to produce an ethnographic study of a social group, uh, you need to use qualitative research methods. So typically, ethnographic research designs uh, will be based on things like unstructured interviews, uh, personal documents, if they happen to be available, and particularly direct observation. And I think, above all else, ethnography tends to be synonymous with participant observation. In other words, if you really want to understand uh, the meaning that social groups attach to their behaviour, you've got to immerse yourself uh, in the group and, and become uh, part of the group that you're trying to study. Another type of research design uh, used very often in sociological research is the social survey. And this is a research strategy where the researcher uh, tries to gather information from a representative cross-section of their target population. And whereas with ethnography uh, it might be uh, a study on a very small group, with the social survey method we're usually looking at quite a large population. So we're normally looking at a number uh, in the hundreds or possibly the thousands. And the aim of carrying out a survey is to try to gather uh, information from this target population in a systematic, standardised and structured way. And therefore, because the aim of the survey is to get standardised data from uh, a very large uh, group of people, then normally the most practical methods to use in a survey design would be either self-completion questionnaires or structured interviews. Remember, structured interviews is where you simply uh, read out your questionnaire uh, to your respondents. And there are three main types of social survey designs. Firstly, there's what we call a factual survey. So this is about uh, trying to find out uh, facts about the population. So the researcher aims to discover and describe uh, the extent of a particular social phenomenon. Uh, for example, the Joseph uh, Roundtree Foundation 
uh, regularly conduct large-scale surveys to highlight the scale of poverty uh, within the UK. Uh, a second type of uh, survey design is what we call an attitude survey. Uh, this is similar to a factual survey, but the focus is much more on the opinions of the population on a particular issue. And a good example of attitude surveys would be political opinion polls that are published regularly uh, in the run-up to a general election. And then thirdly, the other type of uh, survey that might be used in sociological research is what we call an explanatory survey. And the explanatory survey sets out to test a particular theory uh, or hypothesis. And a good example of this approach is that taken by uh, Douglas and Halsey, who were each testing the theory that underachievement could be related to material uh, deprivation. And they did this using uh, a survey method. Another type of research design is the case study. The case study is a very detailed study of a single example of whatever the sociologist is interested in studying. So that could be a person, it could be an institution such as a school, it could be a place, it could be a social event. And of course ethnography, which we've mentioned earlier, is a case study of a particular social group. In case studies, because they are uh, detailed, are normally associated with qualitative research methods. So one example of a case study would be a life history. So this is a, a case study in which the whole topic of research concerns one individual's life. And life histories can be carried out using a variety of methods, but most frequently use uh, a large number of unstructured interviews in which the researcher aims to collect stories about the participant's life. And case studies are useful because they enable the researcher to see the world from the point of view of the individual. And it gives the researcher far more detail and understanding than can be obtained by more quantitative research methods. However, life histories and other case studies may not be representative and therefore it's not always possible to generalise on the basis of their findings. And they may also lack reliability or validity. So life histories view the past from the standpoint of the present and this raises questions about whether or not the participant can uh, accurately remember certain facts and whether or not the benefit of hindsight uh, might encourage that respondent to reinterpret the past. And of course all of this uh, should raise questions about the validity of such research. Now most sociological research is based on a snapshot of a group or social institution at a particular point in time. However longitudinal research is a different type of research strategy that involves a study of a sample of people who are investigated, often by uh, questionnaires or interviews, not only at the time of the original selection, but also at regular intervals after. And therefore the key benefit of this research design is that it allows the researcher to track what happens to individuals as time progresses. And if the sample used is large enough, it might be possible for the researcher to begin to identify how certain social factors affect large sections of the population over time. A very famous example of a longitudinal research design is the BBC Up series. And this began in 1964, and its intention was to document children's progression over a period of seven year intervals to see how both society and the lives of these individuals changed. And 14 British children were selected to participate and the children were selected to represent the range of social class backgrounds uh, within Britain at that time uh, with the explicit assumption that each child's social class would have a big influence on their future. 
So longitudinal research makes it possible to study change over time and as long as the sample remains the same, longitudinal research may give us an insight into the causes of these changes. However, there are some disadvantages with longitudinal research and they're mainly practical ones. So it might be uh, very difficult to select a sample who are available and who are willing to assist in the research project over a long time. So as the research progresses, it's likely that the original sample size will drop uh, as people either die or can't be traced or become unwilling to cooperate. And this, of course, has an impact on the representativeness of the sample. And this particular problem is known as sample attrition when we lose uh, original members of our sample. And also in longitudinal research, because people are conscious of the fact that they are being studied, this might, of course, uh, increase what sociologists call uh, the Hawthorne effect. And obviously this is a much more expensive way of doing research than simply doing a snapshot at one particular point in time. Now one of the things that we've seen uh, in all of the work that we've done in sociological research is there's often a trade-off between uh, reliability and representativeness which tend to be stronger features of quantitative research and validity which tends to be stronger uh, in qualitative research uh, designs. And this is why if sociologists have the time and the resources they will often use a strategy known as triangulation. And this involves the sociologist using at least two different research methods to study the same phenomenon. So, for example, we might use uh, a quantitative research method for reliability and representativeness, but we might also try to use a qualitative research method for its greater validity. So the idea of triangulation is that you are cross-checking one sort of evidence against another or others. So if you've got corroborating evidence from more than one uh, type of research method, you can obviously be more confident uh, about the findings of your research. In other words, triangulation helps the sociologist to overcome or compensate for the limitations of one research method uh, by the advantages of other methods. And in doing so, it also allows the sociologist to build up a fuller picture of the population uh, group or social institution uh, that is being studied. And Eileen Barker's study of the religious cult of the Moonies uh, is a good example of triangulation because in this study uh, she uh, investigated the group uh, using observations, questionnaires and interviews.